While we were all focused on Last Day on Earth and Frostborn, the developers of Westland Survival have been secretly working on a version of the game with a pirate's theme. The game is set to come out at the second half of the summer with tons of comment and supposedly real multiplayer. So in this video, I have 10 tips to help you get started. My first tip is how to download the game. Just like Frostborn, Mutiny Pirate Survival is in closed beta, which means that only a few countries have access to it. So in order to download Mutiny Pirate Survival, you need to get a VPN to India, create an account in India, and then use that account to download the game so that you can play it on your phone. If you are still unsure how to do that, then I have put a link to Flaw Power's video, which he gives you an exact step-by-step -step on all the things that you need to do to download the game. My second tip for you guys is how crafting tables and sailors work in the game. In Mutiny Pirate Survival, you have several sailors that are helping you out on the island. You are their captain and they are faithfully ready to serve you, but you do need to manage them a little bit. And what is important to note about sailors is that each of your workbench have one of your sailors who is in charge of running that workbench. You can see here that Tall Peter is managing my garden right now, while one of my other sailors might be working on one of the workbenches. You can manage sailors by clicking on this button right here, where you will see all of the sailors that are currently working for you and those that you have unlocked but aren't currently working for you. You can add more sailors to your crew by finishing the berths. Each bed that you craft in this berth will Will allow you to have another sailor on your team. You can also dispatch sailors to nearby islands to gather resources for you, but they do not gather a whole lot of resources, so I don't recommend doing this unless you're going to bed at night, because otherwise they will get tied up doing that, not getting that many resources, and they won't be working on your workbenches, and you can't work on your workbenches. The sailors have to man your workbenches for you, because I guess you don't know how to man your workbenches, so you need to make sure that your sailors are home when you want your workbenches to be working properly. My third tip for you is how storage works in this game. Instead of like normal games where you just have, you know, a little small box and you can upgrade that box, this has that, but it has something way better in that it, you can also build these huge storage bins of all of your armor, all of your chemistry, all of the, your weapons, all of those things can go in that one bin. And then on top of that, when your sailors are finished at the workbench on crafting something for you, they go ahead and put it in that storage bin for you. So it's already there. And then on top of all of that, when you craft an item, you can pull from any of the resources in those storage bins. So you don't have to go find those resources to craft something when you are at your base because you have access to everything on your island when you want to craft something. This is an amazing aspect of this game and I really hope a lot of the other games like this catch on because this, this storage system is by far the best storage system out of any of the games of this genre. My fourth tip for you guys has to do with how to approach zones. Much like many of the other games, you can go slowly to the zone or you can use energy to speed that up. But in Muni Pirate Survival, there is a lot of randomization to zones. So for example, if you are going for palm trees, then sometimes when you go to the bamboo island, you will find a ton of palm trees, but sometimes you won't find hardly any. You have to keep in mind that there is a lot of randomization to what kind of island you will end up on and what kind of resources will be available to you. Now, Bamboo Island always has a lot of bamboo, but it might not have a lot of palm trees. There are also random things that happen on islands. Sometimes you'll find a cave and there'll be a gorilla at the end of the cave. Sometimes you'll find a little fort that you can kill all the guys and take their treasure chest. There's a lot of different things that happen in each zone, but you don't know what to expect when you go into that zone. Also, you will notice that the zones are really easy when you're farming them, but then all of a sudden, someone who's way stronger than you will come and attack you. So my recommendation is to prepare to fight that random person that will come that's a lot stronger than you, and, and that way you can kill them if you need to, but then bring a cheap weapon or use your fists on some of the easier things that you will find in those islands. 
My fifth tip for you guys is in regards to how the quest system works. In Mutiny Pirate Survival, after completing some of the early tutorial quests, you will be able to go to your Dove Coat workbench and find quests available to you on the islands. These usually involve quests like this one where you have to find a bunch of fragments to a map, which will then give you the coordinates to find the bad guy that you're trying to kill, and then once you kill him, you get the, all of the rewards from that quest. These quests are crucial because they unlock the ability to get new sailors, which you can switch out in the sailors menu that I already showed you. My sixth tip for you is about the merchant. The merchant appears at least once a day and has some really good loot. So you want to make sure to bring a lot of stuff to trade with them, but you also want to make sure to bring a pickaxe because the island that the merchant on usually has sulfur or tin on it, which are rare resources. So you want to be able to mine those and bring those home even if you're not trading with the merchant. My seventh tip for you is in regards to completing your boat. All of these resources do exist in the game and the best way to get them is from the dead man's chest event which can spawn once a day if you get your energy low enough and that event pretty much guarantees you at least one really important part of your boat each time you go. So that is a really important event to make sure that you go to each time it is available to you. My eighth tip for you guys is in how to upgrade your skill points. Just like in Westland Survival, as you level up, you will get the ability to increase your damage, rate of attack, defense, or spirit. Any of these options can be good choices, but you need to keep in mind that a lot of the weapons in Mutiny Pirate Survival have very low attack speed. Some of them have a lot of damage, but low attack speed. So increasing your attack speed can often have some really good results with some of the more powerful weapons. That being said, increasing your damage can help with sneak attacks, but keep in mind that sneak attacks in this game only double the damage and not triple. Putting some stat points in defense can be really helpful if you plan to be naked a lot, because in all of these games, armor has a diminishing effect. So if you're going to be naked, just five defense makes a huge difference. So making sure that you have a few stats in defense if you're gonna be naked a lot is really helpful. Having points in spirit allows you to to tame animals. You need at least five points to tame the basic of animals and you need up to 40 to be able to tame a gorilla, which can be really useful if you want to tame that gorilla so that you can, you know, clear an entire island without having to use any resources. But then you don't get to use those stat points for your actual character, which in some situations you can't tame animals. So I personally don't recommend spirit unless you really know what you're doing. My ninth tip for you guys has to do with your inbox. In this game, all of the quests that you do and a lot of other things will send items to your inbox. I strongly recommend you keeping those things in your inbox. First, because sometimes you'll need them on an island, so having them in your inbox will allow you to grab them instead of going home, which often resets the zone. But also because keeping them out of your base prevents them from getting stolen when you get raided. Which on that note, I'm not gonna explain the rating system because it's kind of complicated, especially because they are planning to add multi player rating system. But for those of you who are worried about it, the rating system is very friendly to beginners. So I will explain that in a more intermediate video. And then my last tip for you guys has to do with staying informed about the game. Mutiny Pirate Survival has been in secret beta for over a year and it has just now recently been available in closed beta. And by the end of the summer, they're going to be opening it up with a global release. The global release is set for the second half of the summer. And some of the things that we can expect in this game is real PVP and real multiplayer rating. They have also stated that we will be able to navigate our boats through the water and there will be actual sea battles in the water of this game. So they have some really cool plans and apparently they have already seen some of it. The way the devs talk about it, it seems like they're already playing with the, the water and, and they love the graphics and, and the multiplayer, but obviously we haven't seen any of that yet. So it's pretty exciting where this game might be going. It's the whole reason I'm covering it. I'm really excited about these games embracing true multiplayer because I think that's how they've been designed from the beginning and I can't wait to see what the devs come up with. So to stay in touch with what they are doing as they develop this game, I have put links to their Facebook page, their Discord. You are also welcome to subscribe to this channel because if they are going to have the sea battles and the boat navigation and all of the stuff that they said is going to be in this game, I am definitely going to be covering this. I love these types of games with multiplayer. It is invigorating.
exhilarating, it is exciting. I can't wait to see if they're able to pull it off. I have also started a series on this game on my gameplay channel, so make sure to check that out if you wanna follow along as I advance from zero all the way to an advanced player in this game. Well, that's it guys. Hope those 10 tips help you out. I'm very excited to see if the devs are able to pull off what they are hoping to pull off with this game, and I hope you guys are too. All right, guys, see you next time.